All right, in this video, I would like to talk about derivatives and their role in corporate risk management. Now, derivatives are, are often glamorized by people who uh, find them to be cool and fun and take it for granted that they are a good thing. But are they really? Uh, how can we use derivatives in a way that makes it possible, possible for us to claim that we are creating value uh, rather than destroying it? And in actual practice, it's actually the case that derivative, uh, derivatives lead a very complicated existence. They come with many costs and drawbacks that we need to, to take into account uh, before using them. So these are the topics of, uh, of this video. And you you'll find a more detailed discussion in, in my book, A Corporate Foreign Exchange Risk Management worth it with uh, Uxelheim and Alviniusen. Right, so the ba basic function of derivatives, uh, if we start there, is basically to hedge risk. And this means uh, a risk management function, essentially. Use them to manage risk. And uh, the context in which they're applied is uh, some exposure to market risk. Usually. That, that can be oil prices, exchange rates, interest rates, and so on. And um, what a derivative correctly applied will do is to re reduce or eliminate this underlying exposure. So that is the risk management function of derivatives, which is quite different from um, using them to take market views, which is very common in practice, uh, sometimes even used to speculate on, on the future development of, of uh, market prices or rates, but uh, that's something else. We'll save that discussion for, for another day. Uh, the risk management uh, function of derivatives is um, the focus in this uh, presentation. So if you're a producer or an exporter, the classic hedging strategies uh, would be to either buy put options to establish a, a, a floor for your performance below which it cannot go, or to sell forward. Your product price or, or the exchange rate, for example, can be locked in to a forward contract. So you're, you're selling the commodity or the exchange rate forward in the terminology. All right, so, and, and they are referred to as risk management strategies because they reduce or eliminate downside risk. That's the criterion for, 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 for being considered a risk management strategy. And they protect you against a fall in the price of your product or, your, your, or the exchange rate that you're exposed to. And to these two uh, strategies, we'll add a third one, which is the color, which is um, a strategy in which you do buy put options, uh, but you don't cash finance them. You don't uh, take cash and pay the option premium upfront, rather you, you sell call options so that you are on the receiving end of the premium, which you then use to, to, to purchase these put options. So uh, usually they're constructed to be uh, zero cash, meaning that no cash changes hands, it's just you sell enough call options to be able to buy the put options, all right? So here's a depiction of um, a bought put option. You know, this is a payoff uh, when, the, when the contract matures. So you have the spot price here <clears throat> on this axis and the payoff on the, of the derivative on this axis. And here's the so-called uh, strike price, which is when your, your, uh, your option kicks in. You know, below that point, you will, you will uh, generate a profit. So that um, starting out, when the uh, spot price ends up uh, above the strike price, you're, you're losing the premium. You pay the premium, but you get nothing in return, right? But once the strike price is reached and the spot price starts going below that, you eventually start generating a profit on the contract, right? In a similar way, when you have sold forward, uh, below the forward price now, you start making a profit. So whenever the spot price is falling, remember that we're taking the perspective of, a, of an exporter here or, or, or a producer, so that commercially speaking, when the spot price falls, that's a bad outcome, right? But the derivative 
it's the opposite of that. It gains when this, the spot price falls. So, so there's a positive payoff below this, the forward price, but on the other hand, you lose. You lose money when the forward price uh, ends up being uh, below the actual realized spot price. All right, and then the caller has two strike prices now, one for the put option that you bought and one for the call option that you've sold. So again, you see a positive uh, payoff when the product price or the exchange rate falls sufficiently below the, the strike price. However, you now stand to lose on the contract if, if the spot price ends up higher than the strike price on, on the call option because you're liable to make good on this claim now. So you have to pay out money to whoever bought the call option. But in this scenario, you're, you're doing fine in terms of your commercial uh, activities, right? So you have presumably the money to, to, to pay the counterpart in the transaction. But this effectively puts a cap on, on your upside potential. All right, so let's now take the firm's perspective here and introduce an exposure. I mean, that's the, the point here, right? That we devise derivative strategies in the context of an exposure. So being an exporter slash producer here, um, we can first of all define a hedge ratio, which is uh, the hedged volume through the exposed volume. So, I mean, you have some kind of exposure in the business, right? And some fraction of that you hedge. You know, this is going to be a percentage of the total exposure, ranging between zero and 100%. Uh, outside of that, it would be some kind of speculation, right? So here's an example. Let's say you're expecting to produce a 1,000 barrels of oil next year, and you decide to hedge 400 of those using forward contracts. Well, that's a 40% hedge rate if you divide the 400 in, in um, forward contracts through your, your expected production of 1,000. So in, in these slides, we're assuming 100% uh, hedge rates you then. So you've uh, covered yourself uh, completely against uh, market risk. So in the case of a put option, we now have a situation where you are preserving the upside potential. There's no cap on that because all you've done is to use some cash to, to, to purchase these options, right? But that leaves you exposed to favorable outcomes when the spot price is going up and your commercial activity is gained from that. However, you do have protection now against uh, further decline in the spot price below this level, the strike price. So if you've hedged 100%, that establishes a floor effectively, you're, you're protected completely against further price falls at that point. So that's risk management for you now, you're, you're uh, protected. Uh, all right, so looks a little bit different here with the forward curve. Uh, you do have uh, more protection uh, here. Uh, there's uh, less of a downside risk because the forward price kicks in sooner than the, the strike price. You pay for that privilege by, by sacrificing your upside potential. You will now have zero upside uh, exposure. So that is um, uh, leaving you with a sort of a flat line here. You've, you've locked in the, the price you're going to obtain on your, on your commercial uh, sales. So there's no market price exposure uncertainty at all in this searching strategy. Whereas with the color, there is some exposure here in between the two different strike price. But since you've sold, sold off 100% uh, here, your upside is capped at this point. So whatever you gain on your commercial activities, you lose exactly the same amount on your, on your derivative. But here's the opposite, and this is the risk management rule. Uh, when you're losing money commercially, but the derivatives kick in and, and provide a payoff so that you have this floor in place and, and you, your performance will not go below this threshold. So this is a structure, sorry, oops, that was um, unintended. So this is the structure of a color then. So this is a completely different set of uh, graphs compared to the, uh, the perspective of a trader or individual. If we go back to that one, you know, this is uh, how the derivative itself pays off in different scenarios and, and so on. But for us, the relevant 
view is this right in relation to some kind of exposure. So that's the corporate perspective on this. And one of the takeaways here is that you can think of derivatives as building bricks, essentially. You can, you can put these strategies together by varying the hedge ratio and varying the strike prices and, and uh, the combination of different uh, options and, and linear instruments for the contracts to engineer basically any sort of risk return profile that you would, you would like to have. So, uh, and the other, another takeaway here would be that whatever you do, uh, it's going to impact both downside risk and the upside potential. So derivative strategies have serious implications for both your downside risk, but also your upside potential. So it's really a risk return issue we're talking about here. You have to understand that you're not just reducing risk, you're also potentially capping upside potential, right? So, but anyway, uh, they're extremely flexible, right? And you can piece this together in, in almost any way you would like. But what are we going to do with this uh, flexibility then? I mean, the possibilities are endless, you might say, but uh, we need some kind of direction here, I would say. And, and um, you might go to academic research, for example, to, to see if they have something to say on, on this question, which they do. And if you want to summarize this message, um, it's that, uh, well, you can use derivatives to stay out of financial trouble, essentially. When you're otherwise financially weak and would suffer different consequences from that, derivatives can generate a payoff that helps you, you know, stay afloat and helps you execute your strategy and, and a number of different benefits, you know, from having liquidity from the derivative when you need it badly. So uh, you effectively can reduce the possibility or probability of, of different bad outcomes. And that could be financial distress when you, you were weak and you're, uh, People are starting to wonder if you're going to be around uh, very much longer and they start to avoid you and you're not as competitive as before. You're not able to maintain your investment program, let's say. Uh, maybe you even have to sell assets in a desperate attempt to you know, generate liquidity and you have to accept these deep discounts to, to fair value that, that, that you have to accept when you're you know, in a very weak negotiating position. So there, there are all sorts of uh, bad outcomes in, in um, that result from being financially weak. And what if then you can use a derivative to generate liquidity in exactly those scenarios so, so you can avoid all these things. So that's the, the beauty of derivatives. And that's you know, the, a way to summarize uh, the, the insights about corporate risk management uh, in, in academic research. However, these derivatives are very problematic in practice. And this is often neglected in, in textbooks and, and discussions about derivatives. Um, people tend to overlook this, but uh, it's clear that first of all, they come with transaction costs, right? So the broker or bank or, or whoever is counterpart here will only offer you this service if there's some, some margin for them uh, from doing so. So that's, uh, that's a very basic uh, cost of, of uh, using derivatives. Um, you, you may also find that some of the more exotic derivatives are, are not exactly fairly priced. I mean, this is may not be talked about very much, but uh, the provider of the derivative, uh, an investment bank or so, obviously has an information advantage. They understand these instruments and they can price it accordingly so, so that they uh, stand to gain from it. Like, why would they offer you this service if they're not benefiting from it, you can look at it that way. So, so they're not always fairly priced and, and you're, it basically has a negative present value um, right from the start. So you're, uh, that's another way corporates um, pay for, for derivative usage. They come with uh, somewhat complicated accounting. I mean, they are fair value accounted, meaning that you have to value them every quarter, put that in the balance sheet. And it gets even worse if you use hedge accounting, which is when you try to keep these effects out of net income, uh, these unrealized gains and losses on, on um, resulting from fair value changes. Well, you can apply hedge accounting to get those out of net income, but then it gets massively complicated. I mean, hedge accounting can be truly terrible uh, in, that, in that way. You know, the, it can be hard to even read financial reports when, when firms um, 
apply that. So, so that's another cost, you know, you, you, you reduce the transparency, basically. People find it hard to, to understand what you're doing. And maybe if you have these cocktails of different derivatives, you know, do they trust you really to, to use this wisely? Maybe, maybe they, they perceive this as risky, even though you're probably trying to argue that, look, uh, these derivatives are reducing risk. Well, maybe they don't, maybe it doesn't seem that way to, to an analyst, right? So maybe they are worried that this is going to explode and become the next uh, disaster um, from derivatives, right? So there are transparency uh, issues here as well, you know, that, that this affects transparency negatively. Another thing is that there are margin calls on unrealized losses. So that this is a credit risk uh, thing where, where the counterparty in the transaction can, can um, you know, start to worrying about your ability to make good on, on the derivative when you're making losses on it. So that uh, the larger the loss on your position, the greater the concern of the counterparty, you know, that, uh, that you're going to be at credit risk. So to mitigate that, uh, there's, it's built into many of these contracts that you have to inject liquidity to, uh, as collateral. To, to guarantee that you know you won't just walk away from from the uh, the contract, and these margin calls can can be very large in, in terms of the the extra liquidity that you have to have available to uh, take care of that. Um, and this is before the contract matures, right? So you don't necessarily have the cash around unless you you keep a buffer already. So it complicates liquidity management. That's the the basic point. Here. So these are these are all. Costs and, and new instances from from um, from uh, derivatives, and there's also the danger that people will start to use it for speculative purposes. If you allow people in the organization to have access to derivatives, chances are that somebody will, you know, misuse that um, that privilege, and you end up with uh, some very speculative strategies that you never desired. Right. So, so that's another good reason to keep a tight lid on on derivatives in in firms. So, my point being, there are costs involved there and, and they have to be acknowledged and taken seriously and really investigated before you embark on, on a derivative strategy. All right, so some conclusions. Derivatives are, are basically used for risk management purposes. That's the basic function of derivatives in firms. You can manage market risk using them. And they're extremely flexible in, in the sense that you can engineer certain risk uh, return profiles you know, uh, uh, as you uh, see fit, uh, and by varying these parameters, the hedge rates, you strike prices, all these things, right? So, so but the basic uh, objective here, according to academic theory, at least, would be to keep you out of financial trouble. That's how you should design your derivative strategy, if you want to be able to argue that you're you're creating your own derivative. And there are various costs and drawbacks involved here, and, and they have to be, you have to do your due diligence here. Being taken by surprise is, is never acceptable. And uh, we have to just make sure that we understand that these uh, costs as well, you know, before uh, accepting, uh, you know, derivatives um, as a regular feature of, of, you know, corporate policies. All right, those were the conclusions and takeaways. Uh, please check out my, my books for further reading. And um, there's more information on my website as well, lusbudging.se. And as always, you know, please like and subscribe. Have a good day.